Welcome to Jewish Wisdom on JTV and a big welcome to our studio audience. Um, I'm really delighted to be joined by Rabbi Joseph Dweck, who's going to be speaking to us about relationships. Rabbi, how are yeah, you doing? Good to see you, Ali. Take I'm it away. I'm good, thank you. Um, I'm talking about relationships, but I'm, to I'm talking to them uh, obviously from a Jewish perspective. Um, people ask me a lot what the, the core idea of Torah is, you know, this the, the book that essentially guides the Jewish people for so many years, for thousands of years. And um, the, thankfully, I'm not the first one that has to think about this. this. This was spoken about by our rabbis, some of the greatest rabbis in our history. And astonishingly, when they are distilling Torah down to one idea, they bring it down essentially to relationships. So it's very famous Rabbi Akiva. He says, look, there's, there's a major principle in the Torah. As a matter of fact, he says, this is the most major principle in the entire Torah. He says, Zeklal Gadol, which is what it means by Torah. And he pulls this one line from the Torah that is very simply, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So when he says this, he's, it's not that he's saying, oh, you know, this is a nice idea in the Torah. What he's saying is, this is the most major idea, and not just the most major idea, but the most major principle in the entire Torah. And so essentially what he's saying is that if we were to, if we needed to, if we wanted to, find one theme that every aspect of the Torah could fit into and find under one umbrella, it would be this, that to find love for other people is the essence of the entirety. But it's not the only time that this happens. So it's not just Rabbi Akiva's idea. You know, we look at the Talmud, and for some reason, this keeps happening. You know, people want to distill the Torah down to one idea. And so it tells this interesting story in, in the Talmud. It says that this, uh, somebody came to Hillel the Elder, famous, another famous rabbi. And he has, of course, his counterpart, Shammai. So there's Shammai and there's Hillel. And these are two major rabbis that are always discussing topics, usually on other ends of the spectrum. It was kind of like a good cop, bad cop relationship. You know? so, so a Gentile comes to Shammai, who's the bad cop in the relationship, and he says to him, you know, I'd like you to, to convert me. Uh, teach me the entire Torah at this minute. If you can do that, I'll convert. Shammai looks at, the, looks at him, he says, Mike, get, get out of here. And he sends him out of his office. So he says, I'm going to go to Hillel and do the same thing. He goes to Hillel. And Hillel says, well, what's hateful to you, don't do to others. Everything else that you will ever learn is commentary on that. And so he draws a line back to Rabbi Akiva. And he says, look, if, I, if I'm forced to bring the Torah down to one idea, it is the question of relationships. And to me, that means that the most dangerous thing that we can do as human beings, not just as Jewish people, because essentially what the Torah is doing is it's helping us live in a world in the most viable and the most successful way that we can as human beings. We are human beings first. It is to recognize that we are not islands, that we don't live on this earth on our own by any means. So whether it's the clothes that we wear or the food that we eat or the housing that we find in which we find ourselves, how many people are involved in all of that uh, on, a, on a constant basis? So it's a question of how it is that we see ourselves our own identity. Do we see ourselves as integrated into the fabric of life on this planet? Do we go so far even as to be able to see ourselves as stars? And I mean that in the literal sense, right? We can all see ourselves, but the literal sense, that we are the result of, of dead stars. That everything on this planet, everything in, that we have essentially was a result of stars that exploded and that the elements within those stars coalesced in order to be able to create our planet and everything on it. Do we see ourselves as integrated into reality and the world around us or not? Then the question becomes, and if we do see ourselves as integrated, what is the issue of relationship? How do I engage with another person? So Eric Fromm, he wrote this book, he wrote many books, but one of his most famous books was, is a book called The Art of Loving. Uh, it's a short book, but it's a dense, it's a condensed, you know, there's a lot in it. And he writes one line in this book that I think really brings it down to a succinct uh, uh, presentation. And that is, there are two kinds of ways that we love in life. 
One is we say to someone we love, I love you because I need you. And the other is, I need you because I love you. And if you think about those two statements, they are, they are significantly different. If I say I love you because I need you, then the need is the end. My need is the ultimate issue, and I love you because you provide that need for me. And so love is a means, not the end itself. And so ultimately how I see the world in that vision is that there's me and the world, and that I engage in affection and so on in the world because I find it being able to serve my needs and my purposes. And then there is the other side of it. I need you because I love you. The love is the end. It is the reality in my life. I only see myself integrated with you, and I see myself whole and complete as in a connection with you. And so there are many kinds of love, different levels of love, but what is it in our life? Is it the end or is it the means? And so I genuinely recognize the words of Rabbi Akiva and Hillel, the elder, as drawing from that. There's actually a Mishnah that kind of paraphrases what Fromm said many years later after the Mishnah. It talks about Ahava, love, that is either Tluya Badavar, that is tied to some other end, or Ahava She'ena Tluya Badavar, or a love that is tied to nothing but simply existing at love, as love itself. And this, I think, probably is, is the centerpiece of Torah, at least in terms of the, the rabbis that we mentioned, because at the end, we see ourselves as connected. And the reason why this then becomes a question of how we see ourselves spiritually is because our understanding of God is that He is the source of all things. And that in that sense, we're all connected. And that when I can understand love in that sense, where the love is the ultimate goal, and that is what it is that fulfills me, and it becomes my need, the love itself becomes my need, I begin to see a world as one, and I begin to see myself not as blended into the oneness, but as a unique individual connected, integrated, symbiotically with everything around me. And it, it's, one could very possibly say that that's the goal of humanity. That when we accomplish that, when we actually, even if we're able to do that once in our life, it ends up making the entire life worth it for us, even if it is for a moment. So better to have loved than lost, yeah. And, um, and, and I wonder sometimes, and I actually like to hear from the audience about this, but I, I wonder sometimes, is that how we sense Torah? Or is that how we sense life? In other words, does that, is it taught to us when we're young, when we're children? Is this the message that ultimately we grow up with in religious circles? in the lessons that we have if we are in religious circles, if we're, if we're hearing what it is that we're meant to do with regards to God and, and a religious life. Is that the message that we're hearing? And if not, and if not, why? So it may be a broad question, but I really do wonder how it is that people think about this. Well, maybe let's yeah. open it up to the audience. Can I ask you a question, Rabbi? Sure. Um, you mentioned that Rabbi Kiva uh, boiled down the Torah to one point, and that was that you should love another like, as you love yourself. My question to you is, why did he have to add the last part, which is as yourself? How does that, what does that add to this big idea of the Torah? Why is that so integral? Well, he personally didn't add it. This is a line in the Torah that he says, this is it. And the, and the yourself, the reason for that is that the only way we know what other people feel is from our own experiences. So I have to draw from myself, and the love has to start with me, genuinely. Right? It's the first thing that God says to Abraham. He says, lech lecha, go for yourself. And from there, I'm able to answer, the, I'm able to find love. If I don't have the love for myself, I, I don't have a leg to stand on, so to speak. Rabbi Dweck, thanks for joining us. Oh, pleasure.